Hey guys, this is Axeman and we are back in naval action. Another content video discussing um, updates and stuff like that. I didn't want to do too many of these and it's the third one in the row so apologies for that. But uh, like I said in my last video my hard drive died recently and I lost a couple of videos that I had ready. So I'm just trying to catch up with everything so uh, these are sort of filling in. Um, but there's been a dev blog posted on Steam from the naval action devs, Game Labs. Um, and it's discussing the next major patch and there's some really really interesting things in here that uh, I think we should uh, talk about and discuss and knock around a little bit and um, so let's uh, so let's see what's changing okay so I'm gonna work my way down the list as I always do um, I'm just gonna read out what's there and uh, discuss it and stuff like that um, feel free to leave your opinions in the comments below I'll uh, I'll leave it I'll leave a, a link in the description uh, to this to the um, dev blog so if you want to see the dev blog yourself and read through it and uh, look in the description um, so I'm just gonna read out this is the first attempt at dev blog we are planning to deploy a big content patch within the next 10 to 14 days uh, this dev blog was posted on the 15th of February which was yesterday because it's the 16th now uh, we will freeze the build for the hot fixes on Friday and start testing new content last hot fix could happen on Wednesday and we'll provide chat fix in-game mod colors um, and port battle trolling fixes after that no tunings and hotfix will be possible until the big patch is out if the big patch is delayed everything is delayed so there might be a couple of hotfixes or one hotfix between now and the big patch uh, but that'll be it until the this big patch comes out so let's uh, let's talk about what's in in the patch or will hopefully be in the patch new store interface so there's going to be a new UI for the store we wanted to improve the store information for players making purchase slash sale decisions and improve usability a bit. In the new interface you'll be able to see the amount of goods bought and sold at that price level and you'll be able to purchase everything in one block. No more unnecessary clicks if you wanted to buy 2000 of something. If someone is selling 2000 items you can buy it in one block. In addition to that you'll be able to see top contracts and player names placing those contracts in case you want to trade with them in private. Okay, so that's really cool. That's just gonna um, smooth out buying things in bulk, kind of thing. And now um, you'll be able to see top contracts of the things that people want most or people um, have most. Um, and you'll be able to get in touch with them and be able to trade in with whatever they have. Um, so that's pretty cool. Any any UI updates at this point is. Um, is welcome so long as it's better than what we've got now because obviously the UI in game now is very much placeholdery and I would like to see you know something a bit more 2016 ish <laughs> if that's fair to say uh, right now this is a big big change the next change right um, and it involves crew in battle um, New battle crew management, big change, that's the subheading. Crew focuses have been reworked completely and have become more realistic. They will now work as toggles instead of absolute choices. Previously all tasks were fulfilled with penalties starting from zero penalty to 100% penalty in a linear progression and you could only improve a set, it won't, excuse me, and you could only improve a certain task while reducing the benefits on another independently of your crew size. So that's basically saying what you used to be able to do is like everything was sort of balanced out if you didn't uh, or something had a higher priority say you had sailing then you'd have a higher priority and everything else had um, like uh, a penalty right so um, and then you could switch to gunnery and then sailing and everything else would have a penalty uh, and it didn't really focus on like numbers in your crew and stuff like that. It was just like a fixed penalty system. But in the new system, and I'm reading again, all main tasks have a certain allocation of crew depending on ship type. All main tasks have a minimum and optimal size of crew required. Optimal crew, task will be fulfilled at maximum speed. Minimal crew, task will be fulfilled with penalties. Less than minimal crew, task won't be fulfilled at all. Sailing, guns, reloads, repairs, leak fixing is atomized and all of them require a minimum or optimal squad. 
The crew requirement is the sum of individual crew requirements. Switches between crew focuses take time, and the bigger your crew, the more time it takes to reposition the squads from task to task. If you have a full crew, you can toggle Optimus performance for all tasks. This is really cool. This is really more, a lot more realistic. So, say in, um, if you're in a ship of the line that's taken massive damage and you're taking a lot of water and you need to take focus away from sailing and gunnery and get men on repairs, it's going to take longer for that to happen because the ship of the line's got more crew than smaller ships. And um, the, uh, the penalties are a little bit more realistic. So you're taking people away from guns, so it takes longer to reload. You're taking the people away from sails, so it's going to take longer to set sails and uh, turn the yard arms and stuff like that. That's really cool. It's just, just a little bit more immersive. It's um, And it's going to require that we uh, manage our crew um, with more diligence. So that the people that put the time and effort into becoming good in battles, the people that use the manual sails and are going to use their crew properly, and learn how to use those things properly are going to do much better so it's, it's rewarding players that put the time in to get good at this stuff which is always good anyway let's move on the main differences lie in the changes to gunnery we will try to explain it in simple English if we fail please rephrase for us in comments and we will update the text previously all guns were reloaded simultaneously if you did not have enough crew it affected all guns it was unrealistic and unhistorical in the new system, every gun works separately and has a crew, a gun crew allocation. All guns are loaded gun by gun if you have minimal gun crew. Okay, so that, that means that um, each gun is going to take, like, I don't know, different gun sizes and carronades. Like, they took different size crews in, real, in the real world anyway. But um, let's say you've got a big long gun, it's going to take four or five men um, to work it. So four or five of your maximum crew, or however many crew you've got on board, is going to be working that guns. It's going to mean that the penalties for people who get into big ships early without being able to fully crew them, the penalties are going to be a lot heavier, and if you can't manage your crew properly, you are going to be up shit creek without a paddle. It's, so it's, um, it's good. It's really good. Uh, much more realistic, for sure. Um, and as you take crew damage, obviously, um, then uh, managing your crew is going to become uh, a survival tool. It's going to like it's going to become something that you're going to need to master in order to just stay alive. Whereas before, if you took a lot of damage, you just whack the ship into survival mode and try and run away or whatever, uh, or just wait until the water had been bailed out. Now you've got to think a lot more tactically about it, which is um, fantastic, really, really good. Anything that makes it more immersive, more tactical, I'm game for, as long as it's not overboard, do you know what I mean? Uh, how it will work. Example, you have a first rate uh, and have lost most of the men and has 20 men left. In the current system, ships suffer as enormous penalty depending on crew focus. All decks are affected. If you have switched on the gunnery crew focus, you never reload anyway. New system, penalties and reload will... Right, so what... Right, let me explain that. What that's saying is, is imagine the scenario, we're in a first rate, say the victory of Santissima, and we've lost all the men, we've only got 20 men left. In the current system, before this patch comes out, um, even if we were in gunnery mode, nothing would happen, we wouldn't reload, because we just don't have the men for it. Um, but in the new system, and I'll read this from the um, from the blog, penalties and reload will depend on the gun composition of cannons for this particular vessel. If you have 20 men left and switch to a gunnery crew focus, it will be enough to reload two heavy guns per minute, allowing you to fire them individually. All guns have a minimum and optimal crew requirements, and the gun composition for the vessel will become extremely important in battle. So you can set your last 20 men to work, work in a few of the bigger guns or whatever and have them reload that you couldn't do in the in the current system or in the old system if you're watching this after the patch has dropped um, so that's uh, but uh, presumably you won't be able to do anything else in the ship you won't be able to set sails or I don't know anything uh, it says at the bottom here 
uh, certain ships will become impossible to sail without extra crew management. So it's going to be something we're going to have to we're going to have to nail. We're going to have to um, practice and get good at. Because some people, right? I find that once you have practiced manual sails, you can't go back to not using manual sails. You become your ship becomes so much more responsive and maneuverable that you just can't not use manual sails once you've mastered it and I think something similar is going to happen here with the crew once you've mastered how you like to have your crew set um, people that just leave it to the game to sort out and don't really bother with it uh, they're not they're going to struggle against people that are more tactical which is good which is positive for us who are more tactical it also says if you equip lighter guns you will have more flexibility in choices when you start losing crew and if you equip heavier guns you will have to manage crew because heavier guns require uh, larger gun crews so that's just gonna it's all about immersion and realis realism so uh, that's pretty much it for crew management and that is a big change when that hits that's gonna be a big change and I will insert a screenshot here and um, if you see, uh, the devs posted this on the Steam page, but if you look at uh, the crew focus toggle buttons, which is 5, 6, 7, 8 in the bottom middle left, or bottom middle right, sorry, you can see that there is uh, numbers below them now, and that is clearly crew and how many crews are assigned to it. And it says 30 out of 30 are assigned to sailing, 72 out of 72 are assigned to gunnery. So I'm going to imagine if you uh, need to start repairing the ship or plug leaks you're gonna have to take people away from sailing and gunnery put them in repairs uh, so sailing and gunnery are equally impaired or you could take more away from sailing and less away from gunnery so you can keep gunnery uh, working properly or vice versa or whatever you want to do it's gonna add more tactical options which is fantastic but I want to move away from that now because we've been kind of uh, crew focus heavy and there's more to talk about so there's also repairs survival changes survival will also start working differently if you have only one leak it will take only five men to repair and it will not affect other sailor gunner crew composition if you have 90 leak in holes you will have to find 450 men to plug them in repairs will also be affected if you are repairing Victory, you might need up to 30% of your crew to repair 15% of the integrity. The number is arbitrary at this stage. So that's not set in stone. So, so repairs are going to work differently. Um, you're going to need, as opposed to just using a repair kit, you're actually going to need part of your crew to actually perform the repairs. So it's going to, while you're repairing, uh, it could impair other functions of the ship as opposed to just pressing five and then one and then just repairing a little bit, you're gonna need your crew to do that. Which is admittedly more realistic, so um, I am I'm game for that. I, uh, I think that's a good change. I think any change that adds immersion realism, I'm up for, as long as it's not too bad, like I said before. Uh, so that's that. Uh, next up heading in sailing. Sailing is simple and works similar to guns. You have a percentage of crew required to work sails, and if you don't do any other tasks, you will not suffer any penalties to speed of raising sails or turning yards. If you have enough crew, you can work sails and man guns at the same time. So, um, I feel like I'm repeating myself a little bit. So, right now in, let's call it the old system and this one's the new. Or the patch is the new and the system we're using now is the old. And so in the old system... Um, you would choose between sailing and gunnery. And so if you were if you were set in sailing, your crew um, focused on sailing, and so turning your hard arms was quicker. Setting sails and stuff was quicker, and turning um, was quicker with the rudder and stuff like that. And if you set it to gunnery, everything was slightly slower with the sails. With the new system, you can have enough men set to both, so that there's no penalty. Um, to either of them, so you can have sailing working at maximum capacity, and you can have guns working at maximum capacity. It's only when you start taking damage and start needing a set crew to repairs and stuff like that that you're going to start seeing um, penalties to those um, 
focus is, which is good, fantastic. That's how it would work in the real world. Um, so that's really good. Boarding has also been changed, right? And uh, it's quite a big change to boarding, so I'm just going to read through it. Boarding crew has to be allocated before the boarding. And the main difference with the old system is this. If you have enough men, you can shoot guns and have boarders ready at the same time. Some ships with, no, with a low number of guns will shine as a result. Lynx is the best example, which means you can have more boarders, um, but you've still got enough men to crew the guns. And the Lynx does very well at that because it's only got like four guns aside. And it will allow you to board when you are sinking, so you can set your boarding crew ready and have guns ready. And if you know that your ship's going down, you can get in there, board, take over, and then capture that ship, and then your ship is sinking, but you're still all right on the other ship. So that's really cool. Um, we would also like to discuss the following potential changes to the boarding, but they won't happen in the next patch. So this isn't going to happen in the next patch, but it's going to happen in the future. Only prepared boarding crew will fight in boarding for both sides. Um, so once you're fighting and once the boarding is happening, anyone that's not prepared for boarding isn't going to board and they're not going to fight. Whereas you know your boarding preparation would increase like with each turn in the minigame. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Fire deck guns will be moved out of the boarding interface and you'll be shooting actual guns with their real reloads and performance. If you don't have crew allocated to guns, you will not be able to fire during boardings. So you're going to be able to fire your cannons into the enemy vessel that you're boarding, but you're going to have to have some crew still manning those guns, otherwise you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, again, that's making it more tactical. You're going to have to make you more uh, think a bit more. Disengage duration will be affected by several commands and factors. Players won't be able to disengage in certain situations unless they are pulled away from the vessel by friendly ramming. Interesting, we don't know what those factors are yet. Um, maybe, um, I don't know, you don't have any uh, crew set to um, man the sails, so you can't set sails or anything after you've disengaged or whatever. I don't know what that's going to be. Um, but another friendly player can come in and ram you out the way, and ram you out of the boarding action, which is interesting. Um, I'm all for uh, inventive tactics. Um, I love, I love, I love situations where you've got to think about uh, in games, right? I love situations in games where you can think about something totally outlandish, and that you can do it, and it'll happen, and it will work. So, so if, if if like your mates getting like if you're in a group and your mates being boarded by someone. Uh, it's, to it's, it's totally viable to just like go up behind them and just ram them out the way so they're not boarded anymore. I think that's really cool. Uh, production buildings. Uh, I did say this in the last video that I thought this was going to happen in this patch, but it turns out it's uh, it might not. They might get it in, they might not. I'll read what it says. Production buildings are still tentative and might not get in next patch. Uh, says to leave feedback at the forums uh, as to what players want to happen with them. Uh, we will of course try hard to make them happen in February but we're not sure about it. So um, if you don't know what the production building thing is, it's going to be, um, you're going to be able to own buildings that produce certain um, uh, resources and stuff like that, imports. It's going to be another way to make money, I believe. And you're going to be able to manage them and stuff like that. Uh, but they're not fully fleshed out. They're not fully um, uh, finished. So they might not get in the next patch. Uh, they might be in the, like, the patch after or whatever. Uh, but they're going to try and get it in. I hope they do. And anything, any content is good content. As long as it doesn't break the game. Um, and if it's another way to make money, I'm totally happy. Uh, another big bit of news, and the last bit of news, is um, two or three new ships will be delivered after the patch, as they need more time to be tested and fine-tuned. Most likely candidates are improved Niagara, that will be boosted in certain areas based on the player feedback. Well, you can't really call that a new ship because it's just an old ship that's already in the game, it's been tuned, and um, either nerfed or um, you know, sort of buffed. And Essex Frigate 
which uh, there's a few ships being called Essex in, uh, in the history of the world, but I believe this is the USS Essex. It was built in the United States and was a frigate in the US Navy until it was captured by the British, I believe. Uh, I think that's the correct forget I'm talking about. Um, I think it was a 34 gun frigate. I can't remember. Um, off the top of my head anyway. I do know of the ship. Um, but that's being added in game. I th I th hasn't it already been, like, um, already been um, in the game but only certain people will be able to use it like devs have been in game using it or something like that before the Steam release. So I think it's been in game and sort of ready to sort of sail, but it's been tweaked um, and stuff like that. Uh, and now it's ready for everyone to use. And that's it. Big patch, massive patch on its way. It says that this should be ready within the next 10 to 14 days, like I said at the uh, at the start. So um, and it's the 16th of February now, so um, soon. Uh, pretty exciting, new content. Um, I want to know what you think about some of the new stuff coming out, uh, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video please leave it a like and subscribe if you want to. Um, I'm sorry that there's been uh, a lot of talking videos recently with just uh, background video. Um, there will be a crafting tutorial coming as soon as I can do it, as soon as I'm happy with it. Um, and. Uh, Lots more stuff after that, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, guys.